Well, skello there. How the gek are ya? My name is Brittany, and today I'm going to be showing you how I set up the Dubia Roach 50 gallon enclosure. This enclosure is the 36 by 18 by 18, but these instructions are also going to work for the 60 gallon, the 33 gallon, and the 22 gallon. You can't tell by looking behind me, I love these enclosures. That being said, Dubia was kind enough to send this to me for the purposes of this video. Although I don't really know why because I am the worst at building things. I am really excited to try these out though um, because I have the older model behind me and you'll notice that I have like these little plastic strips on mine but the new enclosures actually come with glass doors so the chance of bowing and like the gap between the doors is so much smaller so I'm really excited to try it out. Anyway let's get started. Editing Brittany here and I am still learning how to do this YouTube thing. My autofocus messed up quite a few of my clips. I ended up filming this four times and it still didn't end up perfect. So you are gonna see clips from multiple days kind of pieced together. Um, sorry, I'm still learning this YouTube thing, but I hope you guys bear with me and we can all learn how to be better at this together. Please ignore me while I scoot around on the floor so that I can show you guys these instructions. I do actually suggest doing this on a solid surface like the floor instead of a cheap plastic table like this because it actually makes it really difficult and doing it on the floor is just gonna make your life so much easier. That being said, um, for the first step, what we're gonna need is we're gonna need our large, one of our large metal frame pieces, two of the small metal frame pieces, the ones without the stickers, two of the corner pieces, and of course our handy dandy mallet. I have so many of these things and somehow I still can never find any. <laughs> Once we have all those pieces gathered, we're gonna go ahead and attach them like a puzzle. Now this part is super easy, but you can mess up, and that is going to be with these corner pieces. Now, if you guys will notice, they do have like a little opening here at the bottom, and that is so that if you purchase like the spacer at the stacker kits, you can actually stack them. These enclosures, once they're together, they're together, they are so hard to get apart. So make sure that that little hole is facing down to save yourself so much headache in the future. And also when you're first setting this up, I suggest not completely hammering everything in all the way. That way, if you do make a mistake, you can take it apart. If you'll notice, um, there are some chips on these actual frame pieces and that's because I had to take it apart myself. Um, I did not like the original video I filmed, so I did have to do that. And I'm so thankful that I did not hammer everything in all the way because it's hard. It's so hard to get it apart. <laughs> all you're gonna do is take one of your corner pieces, again, whole side down. You're gonna attach it to the long piece, hammer that in, and then you're gonna attach the small piece, and then hammer that in. When you guys are hitting these, I always suggest hitting the big part of the corner pieces instead of the actual frame because you can damage the frame. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that for both sides and then we'll move on to the next step. So you're gonna have a piece that looks like this, an almost finished rectangle. I know it is tempting to want to add the corner pieces on right now because it seems like that would be the next logical step. But the next thing that we wanna do is we actually wanna go ahead and get one of those large PVC boards. Also, just so you guys know, because I definitely did this the first time I set up one of these enclosures, when you get them, there is blue protective film on both sides of the PVC. So make sure make sure you remove it from both sides of the PVC. Otherwise, you're gonna look like an idiot when the bottom part still has film on it. Anyway, we're gonna take this large piece. We're actually gonna go ahead and slide it into the frame. And again, we're doing this before we add any of the other corner pieces. Try to do this on one handed. Here we go. We're gonna go ahead and slide this into the frame. Again, we're gonna before we add any of the corner pieces. Once we have the bottom part in, we're gonna take our third corner piece and we're gonna go ahead and put it in either one of the sides. Now I say third corner piece, we only want to have three corner pieces on at this point. Whole side down. We now have this third corner piece on. We're gonna go ahead and get the final long metal frame piece. This is gonna have the logo on the front. That's how you know this is the front. Um, you'll see it has the two slots here so that you can slide the doors. The other thing you'll notice is I already have the fourth corner piece hammered into this. And the reason that I do that is because trying to assemble the frame 
without this corner piece on, it just, it basically becomes impossible and you have to take pieces off and it is just a mess. And I'm saying that from experience. I've done it pretty much every single time I've set one of these up. What you're gonna do is you're actually gonna take the slot um, in the frame and we are going to just kind of slide it onto this bottom piece and then slide it over to where this corner piece connects. And then I'm also going to line up the fourth corner just with this frame piece. That way when I hammer it in, it's going to be nice and easy to do. You do have to be kind of careful with this because it is going to come loose and kind of fight you a little bit. But if you do it this way, it's the way I found is the simplest. Once we have the bottom piece assembled, we're going to go ahead and start putting the sides on. Now you do need to be really careful with this. Again, this is something I messed up too many times that I should probably admit, but there are going to be these metal piece, these metal frames that have, this is the front on it. Make sure to follow that. <laughs> what that means is these are actually going to be the side pieces for the front. The piece with the sticker is going to have the two slots in it. That's gonna be so that your doors can slide. So when you insert it, you're gonna go ahead and you want to make sure that the sticker is facing the same way as the logo. Once we have those frame pieces installed, we can go ahead and slide the rest of the PVC panels into it. Now you are gonna have two side panels that have this little hole cut into them. That is for your cord management if you decide to hang heating and lighting inside your enclosure. I prefer to have that hole face towards the back, so away from the logo. That way your cords aren't hanging out all over the place where everyone can see them. So go ahead and get those slid in. Like I said, I did already assemble this once. So the substrate barrier mount holder things, I don't know what to call them, are already on here. Basically what I did is I went ahead and I installed two vertically behind the double slots on the, the front frame. And the reason I say behind the double slots is because you might be tempted to try to fit the substrate barrier in one of those. And that's where the doors go. And then you're gonna be really confused when the doors don't fit. Totally not speaking from experience. Sure. I also um, put one in the middle horizontally just so that that can slide down. You'll notice your substrate barrier has these little divots in it. I can't focus on that because this thing is clear. And that is just going to be so that it fits onto the frame so that part is going to go down. I'm gonna go ahead and slide it into those mounts that I put in already. Both of your side panels are going to come with these cable ports. And these are really nice because once they're on, you can open and close it. Have it facing the wrong way. <laughs> you can open and close it so that you can run your cables in and then close it so that if you have small snakes like myself, they can't get out. Now, when you install these, this part with the little dial is gonna go on the outside and this ring part is gonna go on the inside. When you install these, you do need to be very, very careful to make sure that these pieces align and that they are super tight. Now, no matter how tight you get them, there are some people, myself included, who have actually had issues with these still popping out. So I do actually suggest taking like an aquarium safe silicone or a hot glue gun and just once it's in there, putting it around the rim, letting it dry for 24 hours, and then that way you know for sure it's in there and your animal can't push it out. Now, one thing to note, once you do have this on here, if you turn it too far in one direction, it can actually pop off. And of course, we don't want our animals getting out of this. So just anytime you use this little knob, make sure it's secure. I always re-tighten it. And then because I'm super paranoid, I actually put a piece of tape over the outside of this. Again, the outside, we don't want the animal being able to get onto the tape but I do that just 100% to make sure that they can't pop it out. But once it, if it's on there right, like it, it's not going anywhere. Um, but when you're somebody like me who makes a ton of mistakes in assembling these things, has really small animals and is super paranoid, I always like to err on the side of caution. I did end up learning that I was doing this wrong. So basically what I was doing is I was aligning the pieces and then I was just kind of turning the back and tightening it like that. But what you should actually be doing is you should be turning both pieces opposite ways and you should be using that center handle to make it really tight. And now everything is so tight, I can't even get it off the enclosures. 
The next step is going to be to attach the screen top to the enclosure. We do actually have to prepare the screen top before we do so. So the majority of the Dubia enclosures are gonna come with two support bars. I believe the 48 by 24 by 12. The shorter enclosure, I wanna say it's the 60 gallon. It does not come with these, and that's because their purpose is to help hang heating and lighting inside. And when an enclosure is that short, you don't really wanna be mounting anything on, on the top um, just because it's not gonna give your animal enough space between the actual fixture and their bodies. Now, personally, I find these are kind of optional. I don't have them in all of my enclosures and I haven't noticed any major issues. Um, to err on the side of caution, I do encourage you to just go ahead and get them installed so that you know, you're, you're, take, you're following all the instructions properly. To attach the bars, I like to lay the bars in first because sometimes they're a little bit tight of a fit and if you put the brackets in, you'll struggle to get them to fit. Next, we're gonna take the bracket and the screws and you'll see those little holes up at the top. We're gonna line the bars up there, put the bracket over it, and then we're gonna screw it in and we're gonna do that for all four spots. Now that we have all the pieces together, we're gonna go ahead and put the screen top on here. Now the screen top has a little green sticker and that green sticker actually says, this is the back. <laughs> so it's a little bit confusing because these ones have the orange sticker saying this is the front. This one has the one that says this is the back, but as long as you read those and follow them, you'll be okay. We are just gonna go ahead and set this right on top. Just align it with the frame, and then we're gonna go ahead and use our mallet to put that in its place. One of our final steps is to add the door handles. So you'll notice this little rubber piece as well as the handle piece that goes on one side, and then the screw and the washer go onto the other side. The rubber piece and the washer just are to make sure that the glass doesn't break when you're screwing it in. So here's me struggling with it, and this is what it's gonna look like um, when you're done. And the final step is of course to add the doors. So we are going to insert the door by putting it in the top panel first and then the bottom. We always wanna start with the back and then we're just gonna do the same thing for the other side and voila, you're all done. And I lied because I almost forgot that these enclosures now came with this door pin to secure the doors. How to use it is you're gonna put the tiny side in first vertically, you're gonna twist it and then voila, now the doors are secure. Now I like these door pins for the enclosures with the substrate shields, but I actually like Dubia's other lock option better. Now this is available for purchase separately on dubia.com. I do prefer this one. It just slides over the handle and latches onto the side, just like you saw. It's super easy to put on. Now I personally don't use the lock with these, but what it does is it just inserts through the bottom, you lock it, and then basically the handle cannot be pulled off. Well, there you have it guys. That is how you set up the new 50 gallon Dubia Roach enclosure. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more content. Also, leave a comment down below and let me know what kind of content you guys want me to film next. Bye.